Hello everyone, this is Mumbo and welcome back to another episode on the Hermit's Craft server. It is episode 107 and today we have got a bunch of really awesome plans because as you guys know in the previous episode of Hermit Craft, we basically made a massive hole, okay? The entire episode, the entire episode was spent blowing up a mountainside, then changing up the design for my blowing up device, then blowing up again, and then doing a bunch of mining. We cleared out all the space and then we got ourselves a bunch of enchanted books, of course, for the Jumble Book store which, by the look of things, has actually had a customer once again. My word! How many is that? We have got 11 diamonds so far. That's 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. This is going well. 19. 19 diamonds! It's been like two days since I recorded the previous episode in which we got 40 diamonds from this thing. This is like the most profitable store I think I've ever made. I'm basically rolling in the stuff. Why did I not make this thing earlier? I have wanted to do this for the entire time I've been on the Hermitcraft server, all three seasons. I have never had enough diamonds. In fact, if you combined the previous two seasons, I still wouldn't have had enough diamonds to do this. 64 diamond blocks. 64 diamond blocks, guys! That is amazing. Next step, I want to have a full diamond block beacon pyramid. I think that'll be mega. And once again, I am back in the end for another mending session. This is probably about my 15th time this week mending up my pickaxe. And just one thing that I want to mention that I didn't actually mention in the previous episode is that I have broken my mega silk touch pickaxe. It's gone. It's totally gone. We've only got the cobble breaker now, which is a massive bummer. So, the first plan of action for today's episode is we are going to move the beacon from over there and we're going to put it down to the bottom of this massive hole right here because unfortunately where it is right now it doesn't quite reach down to that layer there and we still have about 10 layers left to go which is no small project to be honest with you that's still a massive hole that we have to dig down at the bottom there so i guess i've got to prep up i've got a fully repaired pickaxe we've got a little bit of beacon moving to do and then i suppose i should probably do this in a third person time lapse let's go now today, I just want to have a lightning fast time lapse chat with you guys. This is going to be like a minute, a minute and a half at most, because there's something that I really want to say to you guys, okay? I feel like it's something I don't say enough, or perhaps I potentially say too often, depending on who you are. But I just want to say thank you ever so much, okay? I want to say thank you because I am absolutely loving making YouTube videos at this point in time. I actually just put out a tweet on Twitter saying I'm having a blast making YouTube videos at the minute and it is mostly thanks to you guys with three love hearts. There's there's a bit of a debate going on as to whether or not the love hearts are a bit over the top but I stand by the tweet because I am having so much fun on YouTube and it's mostly thanks to you. I'm seeing all of your lovely comments down in the comment section. I'm trying my best to respond to all of your comments and all of your tweets and everything like that. You guys are enjoying the mumbo jumbo videos. You're enjoying the vlogging videos as well. I'm seeing lovely comments on the vlogs talking about how much they're enjoying them and how they like seeing the other side of me, the side that's like outside of Minecraft, which is fantastic. That's all I was aiming for. So I'm glad you guys are seeing that. I'm just loving it. I'm having so much fun and I just wanted to let you guys know that you are like 90% of the reason that I'm having so much fun and for that I just want to say thank you. I apologise that this time last chat has been a tiny bit on the rambly side. Let's pop back onto the Hermitcraft server and continue on with the slime farm. So there we go, the giant hole is now fully completed and for those of you who want the maths, okay, we have travelled from y equals 80 all the way down to y equals 5, that's 75 blocks tall. I do believe it's 38 blocks across and then it is 22 blocks wide. So if someone wants to do the maths to work out how many blocks I've actually removed in the process of doing this thing, that would be greatly appreciated. Let me know down in the comment section. But anyway, the final few blocks have been knocked out. As you can see, we went down around about, I think, nine blocks right there. And the good news is, is that because we're in the diamond layer, we managed to get ourselves 43 diamonds in the process, which is pretty awesome. For around about half an hour, maybe 40 minutes work, 43 diamonds, not going to complain in the slightest. So now what we have to do is we actually have to start work on the slime farm. I'm going to start building up the platforms. I'm also going to start working out how we're going to do the water flushing system. And then I'll catch you guys in a little bit. All I will say is I really wish I had created a way to get out of this place. Oh my word, I really panicked then. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were gonna. Oh, uh, I think that should just about do it. Oh, we like grazed the top there. That was very close. 
Layer number one is going in. We are going to be building a very old design by Exumavoid, uploaded on September the 15th, 2013. So over three years ago now, but it seems to be pretty efficient. I'd love to say that I could download the world and check it out. I've tried that and it just crashes Minecraft. So I guess I'm just gonna have to cross my fingers and hope that this thing still works properly because it looks pretty efficient to me. Layer number one has been constructed. The reason that I'm doing this really quick progress update is just to explain a few things before I see them popping up down in the comment section. So number one, yes, I have used slabs. Do not worry, things can still spawn on the slabs because they're upside down slabs. If I place them in like this, then yes, I would be stupid, nothing would spawn, but in their current state, totally spawnable, so that's fine. Now the reason that I've chosen to use pumpkins is because pumpkins are also spawnable blocks. They're solid blocks, so that means that slimes can actually spawn on top of them, which means that, well, we light up the platform because slimes can spawn in any light level, but that stops other mobs from spawning. But it also means that the slimes can spawn on top of these, which doesn't reduce efficiency like glowstone, like torches, like sea lanterns, and pretty much all other forms of lighting do, which is good. So those are the reasons for my design decisions. I hope you understand them, and let's continue building. The only thing I will say is I still absolutely hate pumpkin blocks. I mean, why? Why do they have to be placed on top of a block? It doesn't make any sense. There are no other blocks in Minecraft that need to be placed like that. It drives me around the bend. I've used up pretty much all of the slabs in my inventory. I've only got these couple stacks left. It used to be completely filled. I have finished the first three layers of the farm. And as you can see, it is already working like a charm. We've got a bunch of slimes dotted all over the place. We've had some really big ones spawn as well. This is good. This is promising. I'm liking the look of this. And now we just have four more layers to go until we reach Y equals 40, which actually isn't too bad. Third repairable session of the day all completed. Yep, I'm going to go through a lot of pickaxes today, I think. I must admit, doing all of the progress updates for these things is getting just a little bit samey. I mean, I've built a platform, filled it in with pumpkins, then I build another platform, fill it in with pumpkins. You guys get the idea, okay? It's not particularly revolutionary in terms of video making. Occasionally, I spot a slime, which is always very exciting because that means this thing's working, but that's about as exciting as it gets. So I think what I'm going to do is a quick third-person time-lapse that will show you the process of building the final three layers. Now I just want to say I do apologise that that time lapse got cut just a tiny bit short there. Unfortunately my hard drive actually ran out of memory which isn't particularly good. But everything is now done. We can put away the chunk borders and we can just take a step back and see how many blocks we have placed right here because I mean that is seven layers. Seven layers of all of the slabs. The slabs are fine, okay. I could generally do like a full layer of slabs in around about maybe five, six minutes. But then placing in the jack-o'-lanterns adds like an extra 10 minutes because they're such a pain in the backside, which means that every single layer takes about 15 minutes and obviously we have seven layers, so you guys can do the math right there. But we do have some fairly promising signs. We have got slimes everywhere. We've got loads of slimes down here. So we've got one, two, three, four big ones and a bunch of the smaller little fellas as well. Ooh, and this guy's coming for me. 
That's that's not good. I'm actually going to be killed by a slime. Uh, I don't really fancy that happening. But this is brilliant news. Okay, that is excellent. So the slime farm appears to be working. I think all of the layers should be working. I was loading all of the layers, but of course I was too close to the layers for things to spawn, if that makes any sense. So I guess it wasn't running at full efficiency. I think I have to stand about 25 blocks away from this thing for it to be working like full speed. But so far so good. We have got the green stuff appearing, which is fantastic. Now I'm going to pop up to the top and I'm going to work out what I have to do next. But before we do anything, I apologize for how cheaty this is, putting the second account inside the blocks here. But look how impressive this is. Oh, that is brilliant. I mean, the industrial district looks pretty mega. But you know what? I'd say this almost tops it. It looks insane. So, the next thing that we have to do is create the killing area. Now, the way that we're going to be doing that is by using cactus, which, thankfully, we have plenty of, thanks to our crazy, crazy cactus farm over here. The only thing is, is that we are going to need a bunch of sand to place under the cactus, and as far as I remember, I don't think I have any left over from crafting up all of the TNT, so we might have to pop out into the desert. By the look of things, I've actually got lucky here, and we've got ourselves nine diamonds, in the process of clearing out a radius around this thing. We actually need to clear out some space to fit in all of the cacti that are going to be going around here, which are going to be killing the slimes. As you can see, I'm trying my best not to kill off these little guys, but I have to say, they are winding me up a little bit. Right, so the radius has been cleared out, and I have to say, I do sort of regret blocking off my beacon beam. The beacon is actually still there, it's somewhere around here, I think it's off in that direction, but I blocked off the beam and that means that I haven't had haste to for this entire thing, which even though it's like quite a small little mining project around here, obviously with haste to you just fly around and it'll be done in about a minute. But because we didn't have that, this is painfully slow. But anyway, we have cleared it out and now I'm going to be chucking in all of the sand, which is going to go around like this and we're having to alternate it because, of course, cacti can't actually be placed next to one another, so you have to do it in this sort of formation. And I have to say, I actually don't know what to do with the corners. I'm thinking something like that probably works. I mean, that's probably a good way of doing things. So, yep, I've got some sand placing to do, then some cactus planting, and that will be the killing mechanism all fully set up. And I just realized that I've got to mine an extra block all the way around to make way for the cacti, because, of course, they can't be placed next to blocks, which is brilliant. Why did I block off the beacon beam? What was the point in doing that? Oh, I must admit, I'm a little bit confused as to how I've done this, but I seem to have two blocks between this platform and this cactus and three blocks between this one. Now, I've looked at the chunk borders and they all look okay. Um, oh, what? What have I done? Hang on a minute. I need to jump up here because this is really, really odd. Have I just completely forgotten to mine out like a large area of stone? I have. What? Well, I guess, yeah, I've got to clear this out and then I've got to move all of those cacti back a bit because currently they're a tiny bit closer to the platforms than I originally expected. I have no idea how that's come about. Oh, just thought I'd give you guys a real quick progress update. So I've changed up all of the cacti over here. So that wall has now been knocked back. I have placed in all of the cacti. I've also gone around the entire thing, placing in all of these slabs right here because we need to make way for the water stream. So this area is where the water streams are going to go. Then this space right here is going to be for the hoppers, which are going to be picking up all of the items and transporting the slime balls over into my storage system. So that is that is the plan at this point in time. I guess I'll update you guys when something interesting happens. Like for example, my stone slabs running out. Right, let's go back up to the storage system. Things are finally starting to move pretty fast. I got myself two stacks of hoppers and I'm just in the process of placing those in, but I have no clue if that's going to be enough. I've got all of the water buckets in my inventory so we can place in the water streams. I've filled in all of the slabs. So this thing is almost just about ready to go, which is fantastic news because I just can't wait to get this thing done. I want to see how well it works. I want to see if all of the time I've spent is actually going to pay off. We need wood, we need wood, hopefully there is wood. Yes, that is brilliant. We ran out of hoppers, two stacks of hoppers wasn't enough. So I'm going to chuck in maybe three diamonds for perhaps as many stacks of wood as I can get. Four stacks, that's probably gonna do us. The last hopper is in. There we go, so we've got hoppers going around this entire thing. That's going to pick up all the slime balls, good stuff, good stuff. And then as far as the water is concerned, I think 
I just do something that looks a little bit like this and basically create infinite water sources as I go around. And that should push our slime into the cactus. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. All right. This is coming together nicely. The slime farm is looking pretty complete. I just have to make sure that I don't fall in this water because otherwise my armor will take one heck of a beating. And the first slime is being claimed. Let's see. Now, he's currently fighting the current because I'm here, but he should end up dying. I'm just going to give him a bit of a helping hand here. And then these guys should be pushed into the cacti. And I think, as far as I can tell, those slime balls are actually traveling off around the system. I don't think they got broken by the cactus. Although I must admit, I'm not seeing any evidence of any slime balls right now. Uh-huh. <laughs> now the question is, are they getting picked up too fast? Or is this not working properly? I really hope it's I really hope it's the first one. I really hope they're getting picked up too fast and it's not quite registering. Let's see if I can jump over this cactus. And take a look in this hopper over here. We do have slime balls. We've got slime balls. Yes, we have. We've got 26 slime balls already. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, this thing is actually working. It is up and running just about. It's going to be on a fairly low efficiency mode. But I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a quick test that AFK session. With all the holes in the walls. With all of like the knobbly bits on the sides of the walls that are going to be preventing and lowering the efficiency of the farm. I'm going to do a quick AFK session while I go to the gym for around about an hour and a half to two hours. When I come back, I want to see, I don't know, maybe two... Potentially three stacks at a push. I think that'd be nice. So it has been almost exactly one and a half hours since the previous clip. And if I sound a little bit more tired, it's because I have been to the gym. Pretty knackered at this point in time. For those of you who want to know, I did chest day. Chest day is the best day in my opinion. Uh, I know some of you would disagree with that down in the comment section. Let me know your thoughts on that comment. But anyway, let's pop on through and take a look at what we have going on inside our hoppers right here. So first things first, are there any slimes currently dying? No, it doesn't look like it, which, you know, that's no big deal, okay? I'm not expecting there to be slimes in this thing all the time. There is- oh, there is a slime there! Fantastic! Okay, so we have got one large slime currently dying, and let's take a look in this hopper and see how much we have. Oh! That's more than I was expecting! Um... Wow! <laughs> okay, I've been away for an hour and a half, and we have got... Seven, seven, almost eight stacks of slime balls. That's like one full stack of slime blocks. Almost instantly. This thing is not messing around. Wow, okay, I was not expecting that. You guys know, I was expecting like two and a half stacks at the very most. That's what I was pushing for. I was like, maybe we might get there if we're lucky. I cannot believe that. Well, I never. I am I am totally gobsmacked by that. For one of the first times ever, I'm actually lost for words at this point in time. This farm has far surpassed my expectations. And the best news is, is that it's not running on full efficiency just yet. We still have to knock out a few blocks. We have to fill in all of these holes in the walls because otherwise the slimes can actually fall in them. And we have to remove the giant beacon that is currently sat there disrupting up about three of the layers, I do believe. So I'm going to start work on those projects and then we're going to get this thing up and running fully. The beacon has been removed and a lot of the big holes in the walls have also been filled in, which is brilliant. That means that no slimes are going to be traveling off into the actual cliff sides. And now I am just in the process of taking out these knobbly blocks right here, which could potentially stop a slime from traveling off the edge. Because of course, if a slime spawns up here and then wants to travel off exactly in this area, obviously they aren't going to be able to fall down. It will take them longer to get off the platform, which will lower the efficiency of the farm. And that's definitely not something that we want. So, we're quickly going to remove all of these, and it should be done relatively quickly. Now, I'm well aware that this isn't the prettiest thing in the world, and it's not designed to be pretty, it is designed to be functional. It is going to stop all of the slimes from flying in, and I think 
we have just about done it. So there's no massive holes in that area there. There is quite a big one right there. So I think I'm going to pop up and quickly do that one because I just want to make sure that there's nowhere that these slimes can actually fall into accidentally. So we'll cover up that one there. All right, let's take a look around. I can't see any other ones. You can see all of my patchwork making its way up through all of the walls here. I would say everything is looking good and this thing is now fully completed, 100% finished, all done and dusted. We have got the full slime farm. We have got the gigantic hole. We have got all of our layers right here. We have got the killing mechanisms, the water pushing mechanism, and also the hopper system. And then eventually we're going to hook this up into the storage system. But that will all be happening in the next episode. So I'm going to take out all of this scaffolding right here. Good, that's fully removed. And then I am going to break this sand block. And that should take down this entire pillar. That's a top tip in case you're wondering. If you're going to pillar up somewhere and you've got sand on you, I'd suggest using sand because then you can do that. And that removes the pillar. So that's nice and easy. And I think... I think that just about covers us. Wow, we've managed to do this whole thing in just two episodes. I can't quite believe it. But unfortunately, ladies and gents, that is all I've got time for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please sure to hit that like button. And if you really loved it, then make sure to subscribe. But thanks for watching, guys. This has been Mumbo, and I'm out. I'll see you later.